<laughs> we live in a time where all of our structures are changing, our society, the way we do business, uh, the way we relate to each other, the way we relate to the universe, and the understanding we have of the physics of the universe. One of the major change that is upcoming uh, involves new technologies and new understanding that uh, redefine what we think of energy. The energy of the future involves as well the information network of the future which relates to consciousness. There is new technologies that are emerging, but as well I wanted to talk to you about these new concepts, these new equations that are coming out and that I will be publishing soon, and this new understanding of the structure of reality that's emerging. Um, and so, one of the fundamental concepts that's emerging in physics is that we live in a holographic universe. Okay, so um, this is the fundamental laws under which we understand energy. Can you read the slide? All right, so in this, the most important sentence is total energy of an isolated system remain constant. But you see, although we all get taught this at school, usually the teacher never gives you the definition of an isolated system. So let's read the isolated system. Isolated system implies a collection of matter which does not interact with the rest of uh, the universe at all. And as far as we know, there are really no such system. There is no shield against gravity and the electromagnetic force is infinite in range. But in order to focus on basic principle, it is useful to postulate such a system to clarify the nature of, the f of physical law. But you see, since no isolated system has been found, all natural law are based on something that is not found in nature. Our, all our laws of energy are based on something that doesn't exist in nature. This has a very important meaning. The concept of an isolated system, one thing separated from the universe, does not exist only in the mind of man. And so let's see how that makes a big difference in the way we think of energy. Here is the lake. And this has a gravitational potential. And here is a turbine. It's a hydroelectric plant. And from it, we extract energy. This is put in a box that ends there. So, because we can't have all the gravitational energy converted to electricity because of entropy, friction, um, we think the universe is entropic. And so, we think that the universe always goes towards further disorder. But in order to be disorder, they must be order first. And so, let's break the box together. We break the box. <laughs> and now, we follow the water after it passed through the turbine. And we notice that it's going south. And because the earth is spinning and the sun is shining, the water evaporates and make clouds. And the clouds rain back in the lake. And so this 
his negentropy. And so there is always a feedback between entropy and negentropy. There's always a feedback between disorder and order. And so your body is an amazing example of open system. There is no disorder most of the time. There is a hundred billion chemical changes every second. And there is no confusion, perfect order. There is enough DNA in your body to go to Jupiter from the sun, back to the sun, back to Jupiter, back to the sun, back to Jupiter. And all this is working in amazing coordination. Imagine the energy necessary to make that happen. If you make the calculation of all the energy information in the body, you can't have that much order even at the speed of light. You are a living miracle. And all of these cells, a hundred trillion cells, are made out of billions of atoms. And we're starting to realize that the cells and the atoms are communicating with a holographic field. And this is the base of the next paper I'm about to publish. And it gives a perfect answer to gravity. And it does this with holographic discrete principle. That is the structure of the space we live in. The first thing we must understand is that the dimensions are not as we were taught. We are told that a point is a dimension zero and it doesn't exist. <laughs> Although you can see it. And then a bunch of points are put together to make a line which we are said not exist neither. Then four lines are put together to make a plane that doesn't exist either. And all of a sudden, by miracle, six planes are put together to make a cube that we are said to exist. But if the point does not exist and it makes a line that doesn't exist, that makes a plane that doesn't exist, it doesn't matter how many planes you put together, you don't get existence. All you get is non-existence to the fourth. So, what is the solution? The solution is that the only thing that exists is the point. That in each point, all information is present. We can actually calculate the amount of point of information inside the nuclei of an atom. And when we do, the result is 10 to the 55 grams, which just happens to be the mass of the universe. In each nuclei of an atom, there is all the information of all the other atoms in the universe. Because the universe is a holographic structure. This is a good example of the scales of holograms of the universe. These are relative size of various planets. This is the Earth, very small compared to Jupiter. But this is the Earth relative to the Sun. And this is the Sun relative to Arctur. Already Jupiter is the size of a pixel and Earth is invisible. And this is Arcturus 
uh, Arcturus relative to Atares. Now the Sun is the size of a pixel and, Ju and Jupiter is invisible. So the point is the scale from infinitely big to infinitely small. If we look closely at the point, we see subdivisions and subdivisions. <laughs> so within you is infinite points. And at the atomic level, all the information in the universe is present. This is maybe why the greatest masters that have walked the earth have asked people to go inward, to reach the ultimate information, to reach the connection with the universe, with the whole, with what people may call God. I, in this next paper, prove what I'm telling you by showing that when I count the pixels of space-time on the surface of the center of an atom, the nucleus of the atom, and on which is called a proton, I find there is 10 to the 40th pixel. And since the universe is a hologram, the information inside the proton, which is the mass of the universe, relative to the surface, should give me a fundamental force. And so, when I divide 10 to the 55 grams by the number of pixels on the surface, durch the hologram, durch die I get the exact solution to gravity. The solution to Einstein field equation. This can be done by a five-year-old. It is called quantum gravity because it's discrete. No curvature, no complex differential tensors equation. If this is true, then when I look at these relationships, I should be able to get the mass of atom. Um, so, if I, if the ten, ten to the forty mm -hmm. pixel on the surface, there is. 10 to the 60 pixel inside, which has a mass of 10 to the 55, remember? These on the surface have a mass of 10 to the 19. Now, if I reverse the gravitational equation, I get 10 to the 19 over 10 to the 60. This time, this is grams, and this is just a number inside. And it equals 1.671, uh, 1 1.671, which is the mass of the proton. <laughs>